All right, now we're going to take a look at some of our different energy types. Okay, so what kind of energy are we going to talk about this chapter? So the first type of energy is motion energy. So if you have motion, you have something called kinetic energy, which we calculate by saying the kinetic energy is going to be one half your mass times how fast you're going, your speed squared. Now because it's speed, direction's not important for kinetic energy. So you might drive your car around a corner, did your velocity change? Yes. Did your kinetic energy change if you're going the same speed? No. Okay, so that's kinetic energy. Um, height, if there is a height, um, we have something called gravitational potential energy, where the gravitational potential energy is equal to mass times the acceleration of gravity times your height. Now what is your height relative to? So that means we need a relative zero height. So we typically choose the ground as our zero height. When we start to move away from being on Earth, and we talk more globally about gravitational energy, um, we'll actually choose our reference height at infinity, um, which is kind of a crazy thing, but that works out best for the math there. Um, the next one is if you have a compressed or stretched spring or rubber band, something like that, um, you have something called elastic potential energy. Elastic potential energy is equal to one half times that spring constant times x squared, where x is how far have you stretched or compressed that spring from its equilibrium or its relaxed position. Now these three types of energy here go ahead and combine to be what we call mechanical energy. So if you get to a problem that says how much mechanical energy does it have, you have to figure out how much kinetic and potential energies does it have and add those up. Okay. Um, there are more energy types, but these are the ones we're going to be using this chapter. So let's go ahead and do an example with these. So I have a baseball flying through the air at 20 meters per second at 1.5 meters above the ground. What types of energy does it have? Well, it's in motion. It has a speed, so it has kinetic energy. Um, it's at some height above the ground, so I would choose the ground as my height zero. Uh, and so it has gravitational potential energy. Um, it's not stretching or compressing a spring so it actually doesn't have elastic potential energy. So let's go ahead and figure out how much kinetic energy and how much gravitational potential energy it has. So kinetic energy, I use my equation, kinetic energy is one half the mass. So the mass of a baseball is 0.145 kilograms. So 0.145 times the speed squared and I get a kinetic energy here of 29 and the correct unit here for energy is joules. Okay. Um, you, it might come out in newton meters, it might come out in this one for instance is kilogram meters squared over seconds squared. Okay, But the unit we use is joules. We kind of compress all those other units together and make it a joule. J-O-U-L-E-S, joules. Um, it also had gravitational potential energy, mgh. So the gravitational potential energy here, 0.145 times the gravity, 9.8 here on the Earth, and the height. And again, in order to do that height, we did need to choose a reference height. And so in my case here, I chose the ground. So times 1.5 will give me a gravitational potential energy of 2.1 joules. So the majority of its energy right now is in the form of motion. Okay. And then if I wanted to find its total mechanical energy, um, its total mechanical energy is the kinetic energy plus the potential energies. Uh, it didn't have elastic potential energy, um, so that one is just zero in this case. But the total energy here comes out to be then 31.1 um, joules of energy where most of that is coming from the kinetic energy. So this is an example of how we can identify what types of energy something has and calculate those values and maybe figure out the total mechanical.